Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. Hello and welcome to Successful Minds. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski Schneider, CEO of Pristine Advisors. Today I'm joined by Michael Frank. Michael's a principal at Novation Ventures. They invest in startups in brain health, such as autism, ADHD, Alzheimer's, neurodegenerates, etc. I'll let him tell you a little bit more about that. So welcome, Michael. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Sure. Now, what inspired you to start Novation Fund and focus on brain health? Um, actually, I didn't start it. A, uh, a mentee of mine, a person I was men mentoring, uh, literally almost half my age, uh, was talking to me about the fund and about helping for neurodiverse people, in particular autism. And he has a niece who's just diagnosed very low on the spectrum, and he's talking to me about it. Um, I grew up uh, mainly in New Jersey, um, in uh, Essex County, and we had, uh, as my children were growing up, uh, families that had children on the spectrum. Um, and we watched as they were growing up and the uh, issues and problems and breakdowns and, and all that kind of stuff. But they were upper middle class and had the ability to throw enough money at it that their children, this day, this day and age, are what I would call uh, living decent lives and, and, and have jobs and families and um, are doing quite well. And uh, when Mahesh, my partner, was talking about this, you know, we know of just so many people who don't even understand, let's say, for instance, that your child has autism. Like, you know, they, they tell you, oh, it's just a boy. Wait till, wait till age four or five. They'll go out of this kind of thing. Right. Uh, so when he pushed the idea about doing this, I was on board in particular because i've sort of never really given back in a, a a bigger way from my past career right yeah, it's definitely tricky because like i said my grandson is actually non-verbal autistic and it was the same thing because when they're trying to test you know normally it'd be having a conversation while when they're babies they don't have that capability so when he wasn't speaking it was kind of like oh just give him a couple of years he'll start talking and, you know, there's so many different varieties of autism that, you know, some people can be fully functioning, like, for example, he's nonverbal, um, you know, so when I hear, you know, I've actually seen conversations with autistic people where they'll, you know, they'll say, okay, well, people are making a, a big deal about it. It's really not that big a deal. That could be your case. And that's awesome for you. But that doesn't mean that's the case. It's just such a wide spectrum of, you know, issues with it. So this, this is an awesome thing that you're doing. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so what have been some of the biggest successes and challenges that you faced in setting up the fund? Um, setting up the fund, I mean, you know, doing all the paperwork and, and getting all it done is not, you know, it, it's not cheap. Um, and, and then trying to raise capital to find LPs is a little more difficult, um, especially Right now, after the market has just melted down 20%, people are very uh, risk adverse. Um, they don't see you as having set a first fund or a second fund. Sometimes they only invest on in a third fund. Um, interest rates now have moved up that you could go to the bank and get a 45 or 5% CD for a year or 4%. Or so people have chosen to remove themselves from the stock market, uh, not reinvest or not go into venture or private equity or other things. And I understand it fully. Also, people don't even understand what brain health is when, when you talk about that. And, and even like you're you talking about autism, the spectrum, autism spectrum disease, ASD. I mean, it goes from nonverbal where you're going to need help the rest of your life to uh, Elon Musk, who has, uh, who, who has uh, you know, Asperger's um, mm -hmm. and, you know, is one of the richest men in the world. So it's, it's all the way in between and, right. you know, people don't understand it. Um, but everyone, I think, or everyone, if they pay attention, has someone that is 
uh, has a neurodevelopment disorder, whether it's autism or ADHD, Down syndrome, Asperger's, um, epigenetic strokes, concussions, and and Tourette's, which is you know always going on in you know football and soccer and everything. And then there's neurodegenerative Alzheimer's leading to dementia, Parkinson's. Um, so you know it's 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 pretty diverse. Um, pretty diverse out there. And, 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 um, you know, 30 years ago, there was a boatload of money that went into cancer and they have all these cancer drugs now. And some of them are very effective. Uh, then 20 years ago, they put a boatload of money into AIDS and now you can have AIDS and live a functioning life and not be a death sentence, which is what it was. And we all know famous people, you know, one of the, I grew up with Queen and, you know, yeah. Freddie Mercury. Right. Um, and then 20, uh, I guess 10 years ago was mental health. And now we look, we, we believe that brain health is, um, you know, where all the money can pile into, except in the, in the venture world, there's not a lot of money going to startups or ideas or intellectual property that's in the universities. And what do I mean by that? There's a, scientist or a person working at a university or, or universities all around the world and they come up with these ideas compounds whatever it might be and then they go and get nih funding and this goes on for the next five or ten or fifteen years and they're sort of held captive they don't know how to sort of run a company but they're really good at what they do they're smart and they they've discovered something yeah. um and we hope to change that we hope to try and bring these ideas out of the universities and these small companies that are just being started um, and help them with a small amount of money and then also you know our business acume helping them build a business helping them understand helping them hire you know customers whatever it might be right well, that's awesome yeah i mean i think it, it, you know everybody has their um, expertise so sometimes that like you say if they're good at doing that you're good at doing this you just meet in the middle and that's where things happen so that's awesome now, what are the main criteria you use to evaluate potential investments in brain health startups? Um, that they have to be, you know, loosely affiliated with brain health. Um, and and there's, there's just a lot of them. We were, you know, our hope in the end is that we can, you know, affect a million people in the next seven years. And I'll give you an example of a, a company we were talking to, and it's more than a couple of companies working on this, but... Um, they have artificial intelligence where they can track your eye movements as you watch a small video. And based on the eye movements and how your eyes move watching that video, they can see that you have a neurodegenerative disease. Wow. So little child, one years old, watch a little cartoon or something. And based on how their eyes move, they can give you a very, very high pro probability that there's something um, there's something wrong there and you should look into it. If something like that actually comes to fruition, becomes a company, we can get it up past 95% or 98% accurate. Uh, maybe this could be one of those tests that when you're an infant, you get, you get a hearing test and an eye right. test and a neuro test. It seems like a no brainer. And if right. you can get it down to, to, you know, three to $5 a test or a quick test, or even, even offering it free online, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I said before, people don't realize their child has something wrong and they say you know wait 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 oh no big deal and the brain is much more malleable when you're young and you mm -hmm. can affect it easier when they're much younger and by three or four or five it becomes hardened you, you're absorbing less and right. the example i use and I, I i like to use is you see these videos on tv where they take what looks to me about a three-month-old baby and they throw them in the deep end of the pool with no one there right. and you're like this baby's gonna drown but the baby doesn't drown the baby the baby knows how to have how to flow and and and, and sort of almost swimming right away right. if you do that to a two-year-old they go to the bottom um you know and they and they don't know so it's already a three-year-old they already don't they, they they can't be sort of trained already or there's this fear and things there already um right. so our our hope is um to you know start these companies and, and get them going and we know it's you know it's it's a tough road like you know many 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 companies go out of business 
uh, or pivot or, um, you know, you know, who knows? Like it's, 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 there's nothing easy about starting a business in particularly brain health. Um, luckily they don't have to go and do FDA, um, approvals and things. And those companies that are, you know, making therapeutics, you know, spend tens of millions of dollars in 10 or 15 years getting right. through something like that. Right. Wow. So it's good. I mean, you actually have the experience and you can kind of guide them along the way as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mahesh, Mahesh has, uh, mm -hmm. has done a lot of uh, angel investing. He's done very well there. Uh, we have uh, we have a distinct criteria for, for checking out companies. We we run them uh, through an accelerator for six months. We work with them. We give them KPIs and metrics. They have to hit these things. Uh, they can pivot. They can do what they want. But in the end, they have to show that they're, you know, there's a checklist of things that they have to show that they're doing for right. us to be supportive of them, to us to want to put money into them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're working with them. And there's, you know, lots of hurdles. Right. Um, we had one company where the two partners, one was younger and one was probably 20 years older. And the older partner sort of stopped showing up. Uh, he had a new toy to play with or you know, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> right. you know. And uh, we helped this company, which is doing quite well now, um, refocus and, and the partner, you know, figured out how to get the other partner to step step down and give up a bunch of equity so he can move forward because no one wants to invest in a company where one partner who owns a large percentage of it is off playing golf or right. with another startup or a new significant other, something right. like that. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. So now how do you measure the impact of your investments on the lives of families affected by brain health, by brain health issues? So since we're so new and we, <laughs> we, we can't, at this point um okay. but we see like we see what the companies are doing and there's just so many of them we have a database with hundreds and hundreds of them that we follow and talk to and that's a full-time job as it is to see right. where they are and what's going on but at this point i don't think we're able to really quantify and, and you know put up a, a graph and say we've affected this many people or right. that kind of stuff but even like the awareness like this um you know, and, and people become aware that there's neurodiverse people out there. Um, there's there's a couple of movies or a series I watched on HBO and stuff that were really enlightening. Right. Um, and, you know, people living living with other people like this and, and people become more aware and more um, willing to sort of live in that life. And, and you even know it if you, you know, I don't go into fast foods a lot or different mm -hmm. stores, but I see neurodiverse people work in the cash register and stuff. Yeah. And so their delivery isn't a thousand percent perfect. I don't care. Like, like I'm happy. Yeah. That, I'm happy that you know people are ha have have you know fulfillment in their life, and that's the whole point of this, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even that. Uh, what's that show? The Good Doctor, um, where yeah. the doctor has Asperger's. Um, you know, you can see people again if you have the support. Um, you know, you can really make something of yourself. You know, I mean, it's. It takes dedication, it takes support, and it takes work, but it definitely can be done. And it's great that you have people like you, um, you know, helping to see that through. And there's companies um, that are are specific to the idea of getting neurodiverse people employed. Right. And they, there's more than a couple that we've been looking at, and they're pretty successful. And, and pe people who are neurodiverse have a skill set, and that skill set may not be our skill set, but they're really good at certain things, and yeah. whether it might be input or or whatever it might be and, and and having a neurodiverse person on your team it's like it's like a layup like it just yeah. you know it makes sense it, you know you're doing the right thing um and you're getting a what i think is a great employee well it's funny because i always go on this rant lately about does anybody want to work anymore like you go to a supermarket no one wants to work you know it's just crazy but the other day I was at a store and you could tell that there was somebody there with the mental issue but he was so helpful like he just kept asking me can I help you? Can I help you? And I was just like, oh my God, like, I, I, it's just crazy that, you know, you are the only one, you should wear a crown right now because you are the only one actually working and willing to help yeah. people. But yeah, I mean, I, I, walk, I, I, walk, into so stores, I walk into stores sometimes I'm like, like I'm in Home Depot sometimes and yeah. I, I'm like, does anybody work here? I just have a simple question, like, yeah. like whatever. Um, no, no, the, the fund is really, you know, 
It's a great idea. Um, you know, we're focusing on deep tech for brain health, tech-driven solutions such as machine learning, AI, AR, VR, robotics, hard sciences, right. gene therapies, digital therapies, medical devices, and machine learning. Um, and and uh, you know, we're not focused on ABA therapies, speech therapies, service-based therapies. Um, because there's just a million people out there giving therapies to all this kind of stuff. And, and mm -hmm. we think if we do this right, that that business is going to be affected and not going to be as great a business as it is right now, um, because hopefully we've helped people along the way, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking to companies where you wear, you wear sort of like a hat or a helmet and there's light therapy for the brain. It, there's just, mm -hmm. the things out there are just stunning. And the people that are doing this are, some of them are just still in college, like they're juniors in college. They're like beyond smart, smart and really yeah. pushing and, and, and hard and um, super exciting. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, and that's what it is. Everybody, you know, you got people from around the world with all different expertise in various areas. You just all come together and great things happen. So I guess tell us how has the field of brain health changed over the past 30 years and how do you anticipate it will continue to evolve in the future? I don't think there was a such thing as brain health. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure people think there still is a thing as yeah. brain health. Well, <laughs> you could go online and, and buy all these things that say will help your brain and stuff like that. And we're all this, you know, autism, you know, one in 60 people have autism. It used to be one in 500 or something. Um, where it's coming from, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the, uh, the federal government wants to figure out where it's coming from. They just want to try and figure out solutions. Um, you know, I have my own thoughts. I know, I know Roundup was put on the lawns in the seventies and eighties, and now they're paying out ridiculous amounts of money. And maybe that's leaked into our, our, our bodies, or maybe all this plastic or the environment or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but it seems to be more prevalent. And I would hope that the U S government tries to figure out where all this is coming from. Um, but in the meantime, maybe we could figure out how to help the people, all these people. I mean, if you have a, a family member, an older family member who's, who's, you know, has Alzheimer's and they're forgetting. I mean, they, like everyone is affected by this, you know, an right. uncle or an aunt, or I, I do, I, I know enough. Um, my, my wife works at the, the Jewish community center locally here in West Orange, New Jersey, um, at the Lippman memory care center. They have, um, and I, I call them, uh, patients, but they're not patients. They're, they're, they're participants. Um, and they, they come in three days a week. They're as young as 60 years old. Wow. Um, and that's, to me, that is the most scary thing in the world. Like, like not knowing yourself or not knowing your family member or something like that. You're just to me is super scary. And, and if we could figure out ways to, um, stop that or, or understand how it's there. I, I right. think, I think there's a lot of money going into it. There's, there's a bigger fund, uh, that we sort of, want to be the feeder to it's the autism impact fund it's a hundred million dollar fund uh more more related to autism but um they're putting you know writing checks for three to five million dollars into companies and there's a bunch of other um uh funds that are set up um one by a, a famous venture uh gentleman who made some ridiculous amount of money and he threw a hundred million in his own fund he's making his own investments um, because he has a, a, a neurodiverse person on the family. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more awareness and, and things like this, just people are aware. I mean, there's lots of people who want to help out and and a, maybe they're tired of, you know, helping out on other things and not seeing sort of something tangible or progress right. or something like that. And um, that's why we're here. Yeah, it is true when you say it, like everybody's affected. Um, you know, I mean, everybody knows somebody who has some issue, but I'm even just going to take my example again. My father was an only child and my grandmother had, um, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's. And I remember like she was, you know, we go to visit her and she says, oh, my God, you two are such a cute couple. And she didn't even know, like, he's my father and he's your only son. And it just broke his heart. You know, it's a trickle effect of how many people it affects. And everybody knows somebody with some sort of issue. So, you know, I think, you know, before it was just considered, okay, that's the norm. But I think people are realizing now it's it shouldn't be. You know, there's something that, you know, there's a reason this is happening and people need to take a closer look at it. So, yeah, yeah to me, it's like people retire 
um, and think that they're just going to sit around and do not much of anything, or maybe they they are, but um, the brain needs to be exercised like every right. other muscle. Mm -hmm. And at uh, at my wife's program, they are putting on PowerPoints and and doing small little games and doing things and getting people motivated and active right. um, and using the brain. And uh, the more you use it, the better. And then if you just you know sit around just watching Netflix with a you know a glass of wine, thinking this is retirement. <laughs> um, it's not going to be my, my grandfather, um, retired. He's a semi-famous guy and, uh, retired. And it, it wasn't long after he was, he done, passed away. Like it was over and he was like vibrant and a you know, real businessman and everything. It was like shocking. Um, so, you know, we help to please, or we hope to please everyone and get, get, uh, get people motivated and understand what's going on. Yeah, you are right, though. Muscles, you use it or lose it because of my grandmother's situation back in the day. You know, they used to have senior centers where everybody would get together and they do crosswords and they do bingo and all that good stuff. But I guess as you get older, all of her friends have passed away. So she stopped going and she just sat home every day. And it was like a light switch. Within six months, she had no clue who she was. It, it just deteriorated because she wasn't using her brain. Yeah, you know, the um, they have these uh places uh, I'll, I'll talk about the ones down in florida these giant you know ten thousand units where you know you go to retire seniors only mm -hmm. um and people make fun of that like i'm never going there that's ridiculous <laughs> but like if you're older and, and, and you know by yourself widowed or um you're not getting out of the house so quick to go to canasta or bridge or whatever it is mm -hmm. and when you're down in one of these places they got something going on every second. Right. Um, so, you, you know, being 70, 80, 90 and having all your friends pass away is brutal, but you can have lots of new friends and lots right. of people. So so I'm supportive of these things. Yeah, like, for sure. I think to myself one day, I want, I want to be there. there. <laughs> like, right. I want to go play some poker and shuffleboard and then, then they put a show on and like and, and be around some people and talk. I'm a people person. I like talking right. to people. I, <laughs> My wife and I walk in New York City. She says, what do you want to do? I said, How, can we just sit on a step and look at people and make fun of them and talk <laughs> about them? Like, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So what advice do you have for entrepreneurs looking to start a venture in the brain health space? I think it's for any space. Um, put together a business plan. Uh, you know, think about who you, you're going to partner with. Um, where you're going to get your initial, uh, you know, stake from to, to build a minimal viable product or something that you can present. Um, you know, it's not easy. Like uh, my, my advice is don't do it. <laughs> like, like it's just super, super hard starting a business. Um, but you have to find it typically is like you find a co-founder and, mm -hmm. and one, one, one person is the person who's the tech person and one person sort of the manager person or something like that. And one guy's mm -hmm. writing the code and one guy's sort of doing all the face to face and things like that. And mm -hmm. if you have like a partner, um, you know, there's tons of books and things out there of how to, how to present, how, how to write, write a business plan. Um, and then, you know, there's lots of lists on the internet of, of, uh, of angel groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would go to my first angel group here in, in New Jersey, um you know there's there's a uh, new jersey economic development authority new jersey eda they have 70 different programs to help people mm -hmm. um get money or or, or affiliate and things like that and and you know you want to go to your local government and, and maybe a grant or you know a lot of people write little grant proposals and they get their first check of 25 or 50 grand and they grind on that um and then you go to your friends and family you know, your dad, your uncle, your rich uncle, right. you know, like, I got this idea, you know, I need, I, I just need 50 grand to get to minimal viable product. Would you have any interest in buying into my company, you know, at, at some valuation or something? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's how it sort of starts, but it's a, it's a long slog. It's, you know, it's 50, 60 hour weeks running these companies, um, you know, doing everything from taking out the garbage to, to making the phone calls to, you know, everything like it's, you know, you have to be typically young and, and full of energy and, and want to really do this. And there's, there's lots of people like that. Um, right. and, you know, I'm speaking in general, not just brain health. 
Um, but in just running a company, running a startup, whether you come up with the next widget or whatever it is, even if you come up with the net, you know, the, the world's best uh, retractable dog leash, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which is which is one of my ideas. I <laughs> we have a dog, and I now found a leash that uh, lights up, has a little light on it, and side lights. So when I'm walking on the street, right. the cars can see me, and has a a, a tape, a runner tape of 15 feet long that's reflective. Okay. And I'm like, I'm always thinking like <laughs> my hand doesn't fit properly. Like I would do this, the bright would do this. Um, those are the kind of people that are, you know, like uh, I call them sharks. They're always on the move. They're always thinking. Uh, right. Those typically are the people that are going to, you know, try and start a company and whether it's brain health or not and, and try and push it forward and run into uh, hurdle after hurdle after problem after problem. Um, and that's part of it. You just keep, you know, pushing the rock, so to speak. Right. And I agree. Like you say, um, you know, partner with somebody because like, you know, even in like my business, there's, you know, someone who's a good salesperson where there's someone who's like the good worker. Well, the good worker might be phenomenal, but isn't great at technical sales where the salesperson is great to talk, but could care less about doing that team up because that's a perfect package right there. You know? So yeah, with stuff like this, you know, you have people who, back what you're doing you have people who are interested in that niche or in that field and you know then someone with deep pockets you know you all get together and you can make something happen the the um the talent out there is is everywhere and, and i believe in sort of hiring expert for everything so when my kids were um going to college and we we're trying to figure out how we can afford this and and what's the best way to portray our finances we hired a a guy who came in and explained everything to us and how mm -hmm. as much as we thought uh applying to a private university we got more money for academics and other things than we did from the public universities mm -hmm. um so if you're writing a a grant proposal and you're having trouble there's people that are experts in this that write grant proposals for everybody right and, you know sometimes that small little fee is the thing that gets you over the edge to getting your first grant, getting your money in there, starting to deploy it, um, and then, you know, finding other money down the line. Right. I mean, even like now, tax season, you know, it's the same thing. You know, I, I talk to people and this one just has an account who just does the basics and you get like a $50 refund and then you get somebody who's been doing this for many, many years. They actually train other people and they know every single thing to, you know, check the box for it. And this person's getting, a, you know, a $10,000 refund. It's kind of like, okay, what's, what's, what's going on here one person's going the extra mile because they know what they're doing and the other person's just doing the basics because that's all they know so yeah i mean they always say um you know uh associate with people smarter than yourself <laughs> yeah, awesome so now what strategies have you implemented to ensure that your fund is making a positive impact on the lives of families affected by brain health issues since we're so new i'm going to say you know, we know we know the companies that we're looking at and backing are, are great companies with young entrepreneurs, um, and they're out there in the world. They're out there already, you know, affecting the world. Is there a way to measure it? We're not so sure. Uh, we talked to in Europe; they're very much far further ahead of us on on sort of impact and things like that, and measuring it. Um, we we're talking to people who wanted to write us checks and they needed us to measure it exactly and we're like you know not so sure how to measure it right. um but um there's lots of companies out there we have we have one company um the uh the entrepreneur started it because his his brother had a, a drug interaction and, and passed away and he realized that there are um, all sorts of issues in these uh, homes where they're not getting the right medication at the right time. And he started a company and, and the first to have pill packaging and, and little uh, containers. So there's no theft and there's no interactions and things. And he's changing the world, you know, yes. and, it, you know, it's sort of one person at a time. Right. Um, sure. oh, that's awesome. Now, what do you hope to achieve at Innovation Fund in the next five years? So we hope to invest in 30 to 35 companies, checks anywhere from 100 to 200,000, and a potential of a Series A follow-up on two or three of them for, for a larger check. 
Uh, we don't think, you know, like the odds are that of the 30 or 35 companies, you know, three or four of them are going to be successful. We, we should be so lucky. Um, and, and that's sort of why the business is such a tough business. Um, you see all these venture funds all the time, like, you know, the ones who hit invested in Facebook or Google in the beginning or whatever it is. Um, they've done very well and they, 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 this is an odds game. So mm -hmm. you're trying to throw enough money at enough things after doing the best due diligence you can. Do I have a, a great entrepreneur? Do they have a great idea? Are they showing, um, gains and in, in metrics and and kpis are they are they getting it done mm -hmm. um, it's it's not easy it's not easy cold calling or getting in or going to conferences and, and getting someone to recognize that this is something interesting in particular in this environment where there's other things that you go to the mark the stock market was you know i don't know where it is now down 10 to 20 percent from the high mm -hmm. interest rates have ballooned up you're finally getting money on your you know four percent you've got those inflation bonds with six or seven percent for some short period of time so there's a lot of other alternatives in there real estate has done well over the years um so you know you got to pick your poison of, of where you're going and and uh being being a entrepreneur no matter what business it is 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 never easy in as long hours yeah for sure <laughs> you can attest to that <laughs> now how can listeners get a hold of you uh, you can find Michael J. Frank on LinkedIn and connect if you have a LinkedIn profile. For those who don't, you can go to Nuvation, N-E-U-V-A-T-I-O-N dot fund. And we have a website there and you can read more. And if you wanted to reach out there, there's a little, you know, uh, reach out. Uh, you can fill in your name and reach out and we'd be happy to say hello. Or awesome. so if you have a, a company or an idea, um, you know, you can... <laughs> email us from there as well and we'll put you in a database and start tracking and see what's going on and um we you know we don't just invest in companies uh we also i don't call it hand holding but we we work with them along the way and it's just always an issue there's always something going on right. um so you know it's part part of the business is not just writing a check and running away some some ventures don't do that they just write checks they write checks and that's that and you know, see how they do. And we understand that, but we are, um, th this is a little different. This is not a SaaS investment or, you know, some kind of other business. This is, um, early stage funding for brain health. And we are looking to make an impact. And the only way we, the, the other way we could do that besides writing checks is helping them through these hurdles. And every yeah. business has hurdles and they just, you know, you get, you get, uh, I, I'm old enough to know I've been and I'll say this as nicely as I can, I've been kicked in the chops enough times to know that you're going to get kicked in the chops a lot. Yeah. And you got to recover and you got to figure out what to do. <laughs> well said. <laughs> well, thanks again for being on the show. Again, that was Michael Frank, Principal Innovation Fund. And again, Innovation Ventures is an impact investment fund investing in ideas, research, and early stage companies in brain health. So thanks again for listening to Successful Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show. I'll post the link in, again, in, the, in the end again. So thanks again, Michael and everyone. Until next time. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.